Bennington Potters was started in 1948 by my husband, David Gill. He used his savings from the Merchant Marines during the war, had just graduated from Alfred University, and came to Bennington, I think because there was a, a property for sale, which was an old retrofitted barn that had had a couple who were doing tiny little porcelain pottery pieces. And I think it was important that Bennington was only three hours from New York, down the Great Taconic, which David had traveled all his life, being born and raised in Manhattan. And so that the founding happened there. Interestingly enough, David had no idea that Bennington had quite an illustrious pottery history. Bennington potteries uh, stopped doing business by the end of the 19th century. And uh, so he, uh, he started Bennington Potters. At that time, it was called Cooperative Design in a barn. It was a one-man operation. Uh, the company moved to this spot in 1963, first as a rental and then purchased the property, and then developed this building and the rest of the property into a retail store. David, as a youngster, uh, the WPA was doing art classes, and so pottery, he was painting and he was doing pottery, and he got a job doing pottery, and in fact was throwing pots at, I think, the 1936 World's Fair. I think the thing about pottery is that it's an easy, fast, relatively plastic way to make three-dimensional art. And David was really inspired by the Bauhaus movement in Europe in the uh, 10s and 20s. And that was the idea that you could make wonderful designs and then use the machines of production to replicate those designs so that they could be available to everybody and anybody at a price that people could afford. So you could have really good design as part of your everyday life. You didn't need to be rich, you see. So for David, that vision of making designs and then making many copies of them uh, led him to understand that he needed to have his own factory. So one of the things that's unusual about Bennington Potters is that the designer started it, the designer ran it, and the design ethos is at the top and basically is through the whole company. Um, so that's an important characteristic. We've been in business for a long time. So uh, this is our 66th year. And so there, it's been part of people's lives. And also, I think the fact that we're the first town in Vermont on the western side. And so really, an enormous number of people come through Bennington to come into Vermont. So I think it's the combination of Vermont coming to Vermont perhaps from cities, and then coming to a place where someone was making a livelihood that was in art and in creativity and in the country. And so I think the participation in that idea had people coming here. Then we have many generations. We, you know, I just was over at the hospital getting a blood draw, and um, the person who was signing me in said, you know, I have Bennington, I have a creamer and a pitcher that I got from my wedding 38 years ago. And I'm still using it and I still love it. And I was here uh, last month buying plates, you see. So that's a, that's a long time customer. And so that idea of tradition and continuity. And I also think the feeling of modernism, in other words, it's about both old fashioned and modern ideas, do you see? So that combination, I think, is very moving to people. It's a fascinating piece of land. Um, we're in what is, in fact, a, f a food mill or a grain mill. We call it the grist mill, which is actually improperly named because we don't actually mill corn here. But uh, the building is fascinating. And then out in the back, you'll be able to watch how the, how the trigger mug is made through all the different steps. So what you'll see is, you'll see, yes, we're using machines, and the machines that we're using are machines that we've tailored to do what we want them to do, or alternatively, in a conversation as the designer with what the machine will do, how do you optimize that? So one of the things that's interesting about Bennington is that you can see the relationship of the forming tools and of the machine tools and how they are an integral part of the design. And so that's pretty fascinating. The other thing that you'll find is we here at Bennington Potters are enormously proud of our old company, which we are in the process of making a new company. 
we're retrofitting, we're a startup inside an old, old company, you'll find our people really engaged in and proud of and wanting to share with you their experience of being a member of the company. And the other thing is that they like really telling you about the town and about the region. And so in some sense, coming to Bennington, you feel as though you're coming into somebody's place where they really welcome you. One of the things that's totally amazing is that we've got this huge amount of space for home furnishings, uh, tabletop, gifts, and in a space of, that's changing all the time. So it's a wonderful place to come and get both design inspiration and a place to come and get things for your home. And it fits really nicely with the pottery because obviously pottery is about food, food is about being um, hospitable and hospitality and nourishment is about your home and so you can really use um, our store as inspiration and also as sources for things. I haven't shopped Bennington to start a business. I, um, in some sense, uh, was found by a business and then inherited this business. But I was thinking about why I am in my position in life so excited about making a new business out of an old business and it has an enormous amount to do with Bennington. Number one is it is in Vermont and it is close to New York City and close to Boston, relatively speaking. It feels easy to get there. And because it's close, lots of people come through here. So we have, remember, our pottery lasts forever, so we need to have new customers all the time. So we need to be in a place that draws people from a larger area, and we are doing that. The other thing that I think is extraordinarily interesting about and exciting right now, interesting about Bennington and exciting right now, is that this is a place where if I were speaking to somebody who wanted to start a business, especially somebody who wanted to be, as we are, an owner-operated business, Bennington is extraordinary in the way that it's open and accessible. In other words, very quickly you can, it's partly the size of the town, it's small, and then it also is that there's a recognition in this town of the great importance of economic viability and economic vitality and the real importance of owner-operated businesses because we really have skin in the game here, do you see? And so we're alert to how our community is and we're committed to always making it better because we recognize that change and growth is life and that that's really essential. So the thing that I think that's amazing and I think it's probably not so easy in other places. We're so small and the fact is is that all of us recognize how valuable newcomers are to us. And so I think that the quickness with which you can become a, an integral part of the community is, is very fast here. And there's lots of access and support to members of government, local and state. The chamber uh, is all very appetitive for uh, growth and development. So that, that's an exciting thing. It's really possible here to make relationships and to have long-term relationships over time because in some sense when people come to Vermont, they, they elect to come. And of course Vermonters are here and so they tend to stay a long time. And so there isn't a churn and a turnover the way I imagine is often the case in other parts of the country. So that's one thing, scale and size, and then the fact that it's extraordinarily beautiful here. And that's actually why people, people elect to come here. Also, very unusual people, artists, writers, um, people like that come here. And they also are, in some sense, independent entrepreneurs. And so there's a lot of independent-minded people in Vermont. It seems to be a place that attracts that. And then independent-minded people are appreciators and respecters of other independent-minded people. So there's a way in which, again, that's that there's a smoother quality, I think, to coming in and joining up. I think it's authenticity. I think it's a rootedness. It's a sense that you're seeing what is here. You're not being aggressively sold. There isn't a lot of flim-flam. 
And so actually the value feels real. And I think we live in a world where we're bombarded with commercial messages. It's quite possible that we're simply not being bombarded with commercial messages in the way that we are in other parts of our country. And so there's a, in some sense, a little bit of a quietness. And therefore, uh, single voices are audible here. It's in a very, very beautiful setting. It is very much a quintessential Vermont town. It is uh, small enough and yet large enough because of its strategic point in terms of a gateway. Really, Bennington is Vermont's first town. I mean, that's historically true. Uh, and it's the first town on the western side. Uh, 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 Western Massachusetts and upstate New York, very large amounts of people come through uh, here and go um, into Vermont. And so you're, you're at a, a, um, uh, an important strategic point where people are coming in. You are part of a state which is, on the one hand, very progressive and quite concerned and considerate about its people and its environment. And at the same time, this is a state that recognizes really clearly how important um, economic vitality is. I think this is a really terrific place for somebody who wants to be an owner-operator. And if you want to be an owner-operator, I think Bennington is a really good choice to choose right now because of the um, percolation and ferment and appetite and interest of the Bennington community for uh, growth and for inviting people in and for giving people a, a helping hand and for sharing with people who are, especially uh, people who want to start businesses, uh, a quick um, introduction to the area and a quick, quick access to all of us. And so, Actually, I think it's an, it's an interesting strategic moment. Um, I know that Bennington Potters is really feeling high on its opportunities uh, going forward. We had our 65th year and we said, okay, we're going to give ourselves the present for our 65th birthday of making a commitment to seeing the company get to 100 which is this really fascinating thing because all of us are old enough so we won't be working at Bennington Potter's 100th birthday. But what we're doing right now is growing the company so that we can invite in the next generation and the successor generation, but we're extraordinarily excited by it and we feel as though Bennington is the perfect place for us to be.